one of the ways we can train the mind not to uh, get lost in its own creations, its own proliferations. When you find your thoughts of absorbed in some recreation of the past, or imagining the future, some fantasy or other, and when we notice that, we notice there's a uh, an absorption in that imagined world, and we can take a moment to to trace back the sequence of associations that led us to that a particular fantasy or that that memory that. Uh, mental creation. Lost in the irritation with something, imagining some uh, argument or conflict or frightening tense situation or some desirable, delightful possibility. When we take a moment to, to follow it back, Often we realize that the cause of that particular fantasy or that recollection or that imagined situation it was just a sound that we heard, the noise of a plane flying overhead. The memory of a a word, a phrase that uh, appears in the memory, a feeling in the body. A particular sound of somebody coughing. You might hear a, a cough across the room and think, oh, that sounds just like my grandmother. She used to live in Hartlepool. Oh, I'm really glad I don't live in the north of England. It's much better down here in the south. Maybe I should buy a house down here. Can't afford a house in these parts, though. What can I do about my career to increase my funding? Next thing we know, we're uh, hatching all kinds of investment schemes, planning uh, which stocks to buy or which casinos got the best opportunities. And it all began with a cough across the room. So when we, when we trace it back, think, oh, it was just a sound. That's all. And from that little seed, then they hatched this whole, this whole garden, this whole forest of proliferations. Look at that. And when we trace it back, we can see it was something very simple, very straightforward, very uncomplicated. Just a sound or a feeling in the body or a random memory. That's all. So uh, it's a simple little exercise to, to carry out. But when we see how frequently the things that we create uh, stress and tension within ourselves that cause our, uh, our heart to dwell in a negative self-image or anxieties about the future, tensions being conjured up between ourselves and others, so much of it just comes from the habits of mental proliferation, conceptual proliferation. And that if we just take a little time, a little effort, to see that process happening, to follow it back, we see, oh, it was just a, 
a sensation in my leg. It was just a, a sound that I heard. Just a, the impression of seeing somebody's shirt or a, the smell of the grass. A particular kind of rose beside the, the kitchen. That's all. And we see how uh, simple and spacious things are when we are not drawn into those habits of conceptual proliferation, then it encourages us. As the mind starts to launch into those creations, those elaborations, then we become more able to see that happening, see that complication forming. And it helps us to let go, to not create more of that, not to feed that, but rather just to come back to hearing, smelling, seeing, tasting. <coughs> and how simple, how spacious, how uncomplicated, how unburdensome as simple impressions are.
And if your attention is able to rest quite steadily in the present, mind becoming a little bit more settled, quiet, and you're aiming to to leave the breath aside as a particular meditation object. In a way, simple way that we uh, can support that quality of open awareness, not fixing on a particular object, is to reflect upon the it's the fluid, transient nature of experience. To allow the, the mind, the heart, to simply be an open space that receives and knows and lets go of all experience. We need to let go of paying such close attention to the content of experience to look instead at the process of it. So rather than to dwell upon the fact this is a sound or a feeling that you like or that you don't like, a mental image that is exciting or is frightening, to instead look at the quality of change, transiency, Whether it's a sound or a feeling, it's changing. Whether it's a memory, sensation in the body, a mood, it's changing. Whether we call it inside, like a thought, or outside, like a sound or a smell, a sight, it's changing. These patterns arise, take shape within consciousness, and then dissolve. And the more that we're able to attend to the process of experience, rather than to dwell upon the, the content, and the more that we're able to be at ease, non-reactive, spaciously accepting of everything that appears, the liked, the disliked, the familiar, the unfamiliar, the sacred, the profane, the mundane, able to open to it all, to recognize these are just patterns of nature, patterns of consciousness taking shape here in the mind, arising, doing their thing, dissolving. And the more that we can simply be that open, receptive space that knows, is aware without entanglement, without clinging, and the more that the heart is able to participate in the flow of experience without entanglement, without confusion, as a fundamental ease, peacefulness, brightness, So as we make the effort to establish this clear, attentive, mindful awareness, this is something that we can use to support that. To remind ourselves, it doesn't matter whether we like it or dislike it, is it changing? It doesn't matter whether it's inside or outside, is it changing? It doesn't matter whether it's familiar or unfamiliar, is it changing? Does it really have an owner? To reflect in this way helps the, the disentangling process, supports the, the attitude of non-clinging, non-grasping, helping us not to get on the train 
and get caught in the, the flow of like and dislike as it transforms into wanting, hating, different kinds of, of attachment. <laughs> 